Steve now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the 439th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my uh, my succulent co-host. There we go. I didn't look up an adjective today. SAT word of the day, succulent. I love succulents. I have, as you just heard. Solo maintenance. The most sublime of personalities, sublime manic. The love. Uh, and then we've got the person that leaves fluff all over my, my house when she comes over. The fluffiest one's a cat. I am indeed the fluffiest whimsy goat. I don't feel like a succulent. I feel like that's a different kind of grass type. You got the fluff with is. the right stuff. Mm. Mm, there mm-hmm. we go. Uh, welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle stands for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, for those of you unaware. A nonsensical name that I came up with when I was 16 in my bedroom and made this podcast that you see here before you. Here, here before you. Um, and... It's a, it's a wonderful place. We talk everything Pokemon from the video game to the trading card game uh, to, I don't know, everything else. The Lugia pen holders I bought in Japan. That's the thing that I talk about <laughs> literally all the time. It's sitting right in front of me on my desk. You do. I talk about it more often than I should. I was so excited to get it. You don't even know how, how like vi- visibly excited I was. <laughs> Lugia's nice. Yeah. Like, the whole legends look nice on things. I, I think they do look nice, except on the uh, original Stitch designs, by the way. Just in case you haven't looked at them, like, so Original Stitch put out, like, their full Gen 2 thing. I, I'm not sure. I think I think Sublime's aware, but maybe not when it's a cut. Yes, um, I am. I am, okay. because I yeah. listen to the show. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, Honestly, I think Zapdos has my favorite Original yeah, Stitch the, the, design. The Holo and Gia ones Stitch? are disappointing. Mm. I mean, I bought the I bought the Totodile one. I'm still waiting for it. It should be here later this month. Ooh, exciting. Yeah, uh, it's, it's waiting. It's like the most that shirt that ever existed. <laughs> it's a Beach Boy style Hawaiian shirt with the toted aisle on it. It's 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 just so many things all in one. Yeah, it was a hundred dollars. Yeah, it was a birthday present for my wife. Deserved, deserved. I mean, yes. it's, it's a business expense, right? So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have to buy a shirt that embodies my personality to the fullest extent. Uh, so geez, that's good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's been a good time. Uh, I'm I'm waiting for that. I I can't wait for that. But yeah, the Ho and Lugia ones look like they look awful. I I was hoping for more. I'm a little disappointed because like I I might depending on how nice this shirt is, I might just like go buy a second one at some point. I need mm. to look up their designs because I can't remember what they're a lot of their. I mean, it's it's hard to tell you because like each design's unique. But yes. it's uh the Ho and Lugia ones are actually pretty much the same. And I was also really disappointed by like the legendary beast too. Like the the Soikun, Raikou, and Entei ones dogs, are also pretty weak. The They're see, pretty weak see. sauce. Hmm. Uh, I was I was very disappointed with those, but like the Pineco one's pretty cool. It turns it's just him with little he's a pineapple. It's very <laughs> cute. It's like a really good Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> All right, but that's enough about Hawaiian shirts. What have you guys been up to lately? Sublime. It's been so long since you've been on the show. It's so long, you know. I just. I've been, like, keeping track of everything I did because it's been so long, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> you must have, you well, must have. since I last checked in, um, was it, didn't Community Day happen? Oh, yeah, it did. I, I didn't, didn't play. Yeah, that's, I think that's what happened. And that's what, that's my story, is I didn't play because I was too busy doing other things. I, I didn't want to do Community Day <laughs> just because, it. like, I was just like, this is a really good way to break quarantine, and I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to be that guy that breaks quarantine for Pokemon Go. Well, I mean, they even did it for, like, do it from your home. I don't understand playing... Yeah. I, I don't have a desire to play Pokemon Go while I'm just sitting on my couch. Yeah, very that. Mm. I just don't have that I desire. I hate the Lugia and ho by the way. They're okay. They're, okay. they're, just they're like, good. they're meh. Like, they're, like there's more yeah. exciting designs. It, that's exactly right. There are. There are more exciting designs. I like, especially in Gen One. Like, there's some really cool ones. Like the Fira one is probably the most unique one I can think Agreed. of. Like, there's a lot of really good ones. Yeah. There's a lot of really good ones, and I feel like when you put out like a bleh one, it's just like it's just like no, nah, I don't want that. Mm. It, that's that's all I can think of. But they, I mean, they had like a really cool like Lugia hoodie on Pokemon Center that I think I'd want instead of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I that's something I'll think about. 
Uh, what about you, Whimsicott? What have you been up to? It's been a minute since you were here, though. Uh, yes. So since the last time we spoke, I, I did end up buying Animal Crossing. So I played I a saw, little bit of that. I saw that on my Switch. <laughs> yeah. I saw it popped up on my screen and I'm like, yeah. It was like a day after we talked to you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the like, day after we talked. I was just like, I was just like, like, I was just no, like yeah, she gave in. <laughs> she gave in. What, what happened was I started uh, looking at a YouTube playthrough. And within like three minutes, I was like, wait, so the plot of the game is you go on a, an essentially forever vacation yeah. on a remote island. And I'm like, that is exactly what I need in my life right now. So I turned off the YouTube video and I bought the game. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. Like, that's, that's 100%. That's a very good characterization of what it is. That that was exactly what my like psychophysical need was at the time. <laughs> it's the so perfect I... game for social distancing. It really is. Promote. It really is. There you go. It's the correct message for our times. Yeah, it's not even about the social distancing. Is that I've been working so much. Yeah, no, no. I like you said. I'm not going to buy I it just... because I don't want to be distracted. I'm like, no, you need that. I I did need that, and I did play quite a bit of it. Not a ton. But enough to yeah. no, help get, me relax. Get that fill. Yeah, no, because like Animal Crossing yeah. is I was explaining to somebody it was uh it was like right before we had uh we we had like the mandatory stay at home here in Oha Ohio. I almost said Oahu. Mm. I don't live in Oahu, I live in Ohio. <laughs> oh um but we wish. I wish I lived in Oahu. Uh maybe but someday, you never know. Maybe one day. Maybe. Yeah. Uh so maybe. So, but the it's it happened because like Doom came out on the same day as Animal Crossing. I'm like, I'm pretty excited for Animal Crossing. Talking with this guy, and he goes, he goes, I never understood that game. I'm like, well, what you have to think of, you know, those guys that have those little Zen gardens with like those little rakes and the rocks and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and they just play with that. And he goes, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's what that game is. Yeah, it's just much. it's just a game like that. I I have zero other problems with it. I have to I have to say I'm not so interested in all the like landscaping and getting the rare flowers and oh, yeah, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All I care about is filling out the museum because I adore blathers. <laughs> like the little Tweety British owl that just wants to, you know, help you build an amazing aquarium and a butterfly enclosure. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this is everything I've ever wanted in a game ever. Yeah, I mean, it's also, I mean, that also has like some Pokemon aspects to it, I think, to an extent. Mm. A or, bit. Or, a yeah, bit, yeah. It's just collection. I mean, got to catch them all. Got to catch all the fish. Got to catch all the bugs. Yeah, but I'm like, I, I love museums and aquariums and stuff This one like looks that. particularly nice. I will say that. Like yeah. the experience walking through this one is actually like walking oh, through a museum. Yes. So like, I've been very impressed. It was mind blowing when I realized what was happening. I'm like, okay, no, this, this is all I care about right now. Animal Crossing's doing real good with that. It's really good. And then I, I did play a bit of Pokemon because I started a new game on Pokemon Shield. Okay. I haven't done much because, again, not a lot of free time. But I do want to say that at some point my party was a Scorbunny and five Wulu. And I think that's <laughs> very on brand for me. <laughs> I, I think that's what you should go through the whole game with. Just five Wulu. I'm just, uh, I've been putting it off until DLC uh, drops. Uh, like another playthrough. Just because I want to... Uh, I want to go through like the game again, but without the lens of like this was a mistake <laughs> the entire time. Because like I was definitely jaded the first time I went through. I was just like I'm like because like uh, I went in going after I play this, Pokemon's never going to be the same to me again. Like I went in knowing mm -hmm. that. I'm like I don't know, and I was just like I hope it's for the better and not for the worse. Uh, and like I, I think I came out like with mixed feelings. Obviously, it's and, a wash. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, like there were good things that came out of Sword and Shield. Like I, I definitely want to say like. That's something that I feel like people who review the show don't realize is that, like, there are good things about those games that I like. Yeah. It's very glossy. Yeah. It had a nice <laughs> coat of paint. I mean, no, I thought, I thought, I mean, some things they did very well. Um, I mean, I, first of all, all of the competitive, like, um, enhancements they made, like, just conveniences, it's like the, all of the, all of the quality of life improvements they made. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love being able to access the box on the go. I love nature. Right. Mints. I love XP candies. I think rating is a really cool feature. Ah. Uh I, I think they kind of messed up with the latest raid rotation, but um, are you hating on the whimsicott? Are you hating on the whimsicott thatch? Be careful! I'm not Be hating careful. on the whimsicott. I'm not hating on the whimsicott. I'm just hating on like the Pokemon that like. So so here's my thought process on it. Like so so the latest raid rotation for those of you who are unaware because it just happened. So like this is probably part of the news, but 
it's like it's like competitively popular Pokemon. And Mm -hmm. so one, if I if they're competitively popular, the chances of me having a competitively popular Pokemon ready is very high. It's very high. So why do I need to catch competitively popular Pokemon? No, I need you to like drop like an extra move on Drillbur, like Hydro Pump, and then make me excited. (laughs) Um, But but that's that's perfectly fine. All of five minutes. Yeah, for all it was like twelve hours, I think. But (laughs) (laughs) it was. uh, But I think you need like something like that would be exciting. Like something that's just like maybe this could be good. You know. Give me something that's like, maybe this could be good. Or even, honestly, I would probably be, have been more excited if they would have been like, hey, we dropped in the Alolan starters. Oh, yes. Like, that would have been more exciting, I think, than like, hey, here's another Whimsicott or Togekiss or something like that. And by the way, that that is that is how they should do Alolan forms. Like, like oh, how yeah. they do them yeah. in Pokemon Go. Like, you just have an Alolan Raichu raid, and then you have an Alolan Raichu that's caught in Galar. I think the only one that's an issue is Alolan Raichu, and also, um, right now, um, uh, no, Weezing? I think... Weezing? Uh, no, Weezing? Weezing's not Alolan really... Alolan Persian. Uh, a Cantonian Weezing's a problem. Yeah. No, Alolan Persian's fine, because you can still breed them in Gen 8. Interesting. Because if you breed an Alolan Persian from Gen 7, you get an Alolan Meowth. Okay, so here's what I bred when I was finishing my Pokedex, and I ended up having to transfer a, like a Persian in. No, no, you can get you can get a regular breed Meowth. The gift Meowth. I, I had a gift. The gift Meowth. No, meowth gift Meowth doesn't evolve. Cantonian Meowth, right? Gift, yeah, the Cantonian Meowth. Yeah, but I gift bred it. Evolve. But you can breed it, right? Oh, can you? Mm-hmm. So I bred it thinking you can. I bred it with a Ditto, thinking I should get another Cantonian Meowth, and it huh. came out as a Galarian Meowth. Uh, I think you need to give it an Everstone. Huh. Yeah, I, yeah. I think uh, you need okay. to give the That's the weird. non-regional form an Everstone. There's a way to do it for the egg yeah. to come out as the non-regional form. But there's there's a oh, okay. there's a way to get the regional forms bred. Like you can breed the Mm-mm. regional forms. Interesting. I did not know. That. It's like you can breed an Alolan Vulpix. You can breed you know stuff like that. So it just has to be the one holding the Everstone. Yeah, I think. Don't probably. don't quote me on that. I think. I, I'm like ninety percent sure there's a mechanic like that. It might not be the Everstone, it might be another item, but I think that's that's the way you do it. It is possible though. It is possible. I mean you could also make a trade there's a trade for a Cantonian Meowth. So anyway. in that case it's possible to have a Galarian born Alolan Vulpix. Yes. Okay. There yes. you go. That is that is one hundred percent possible. I did mm-hmm. not know that. Yeah, say yeah. I feel enlightened. Everything, everything, but like Raichu right now is a problem. It, it isn't a problem. Raichu is the one that's a problem because you can't. Yeah, because you, can't get you Alolan just Raichu. get a Pikachu. Yeah, there's no, there's no Alolan Pikachu. Mm-mm. So that that is your problem. But um, yeah, I'm hoping like Isle of Armor or something. Like, oh, it's somewhat tropical. Here's some Alolan Pokemon or something like that. Um, yeah. But even then, I think you're right. They should just do a raid. Like, yeah, Alolan Raichu raid. Let's go. Because I, I was very surprised that they didn't have something like um, like in Let's Go where you could just trade like Raichu infinitely to get a Lolan Raichu. That was so nice, right? Yeah, I feel like that's a really the good way quality of light. It? I mean, they they handled it to an extent as well in Sword and Shield, but it was only for Meow- Cantonian Meowth and for Yamask. Mm-mm. And I guess Unovan Yamask. Um, so I mean, there, there's your there's your problem there, but. Uh, yeah, so good times. This is a good place to stop, though. We're going to kick it on over to the news, so let's cue that epic music. <laughs> And welcome to the news. The news is here, and we've got some things to talk about because the Pokemon community has been doing pretty much nothing. So this is this is a great time to just dig into some news. There's been so much news for such nothing. So in general news, like we mentioned earlier today, the max raid battles have shifted and are now promoting the competitive Pokemon. Um, so you can you can get Togekiss, Tyranitar, Dragapult, Whimsicott. Um, and I know Rotom. Rotom Wash and Rotom Heat are both exclusive to different games, mm. which was interesting because like Rotom Heat's not used that much, but Rotom Wash is obviously. Um, Rotom Heat's definitely like the second best Rotom, so good for them. Remember in Gen Six, oh, back in Gen Six, so good. Yes. Rotom Heat was one of like the best Pokemon to use for VGC. Yeah, 
Because mm. there weren't a lot of good fire types. I would say Rotom Heat, even now, is probably used more in VGC than in singles. Or than, than yeah, Rotom I Wash. agree with that. I, I don't think Rotom Wash is, like, crazy popular. It's around. But I would it's, say... Sure, it's good. It's yeah, good. it's good. I think... It, I, I Even then, I think Rotom Wash and Rotom Heat are probably saying similar numbers. Maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. Together. Because Rotom Wash is... I, I don't want to say nerfed, but... He's, he's just not as good as he used to be. He's not countering as many things as he used to, um, mm. and, which is which is the bigger part of it. But uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's really cool, though. I've been I've been in though. We did that on raid night for patrons uh, on Thursday and it was all right. I mean, like I said in the in like the intro, I don't think it's that exciting to have things like Togekiss and Tyranitar and Dragapult because I already have these things like I don't really care. The Rotoms are cool, though. I think it'd be really cool just to do like a whole raid rotation of just Rotom. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. Except for flying. No one likes No, you, you bring flying. You bring flying. Um, I mean, <laughs> no, you, you just have flying and you meme the heck out of it. Uh, also, for those of you unaware, the uh, anime in Japan has stopped airing new episodes. Um, and it's just going to be re airing reruns right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, they haven't been able to get together and do proper voice editing for all those things. And you have artists who are at home doing what they can. So mm -hmm. so obviously the production of the show has been slowed down, uh, which honestly is a little bit interesting for me because I'm wondering if like the dub will catch up to the sub again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that that would be interesting. Uh, but that's that's it for the general stuff. And I'll switch over to Whimsicott because Whimsicott's got some yes. some video game stuff. I do have some video game stuff because Season 4 of Ranked Battle has begun. It's going to go from May 1st to June 30th, so that's a slightly longer season. Mm -hmm. And you can bring every Gigantamax Pokemon except for Melmetal. Melmetal is not released yet. It's not legal. Yes, please you remember You cannot that. have it. You cannot <laughs> have a Melmetal through any means. Melmetal does not exist. Gigantamax Melmetal, as far as you're concerned, is like uh, uh, AZ's Floet. It does yeah, not exist. not even that. It does not exist. <laughs> it does not um, exist. So you can bring essentially anything as long as it has been caught or hatched in Galar. Yeah. So and no Alolan no, Raichu. <laughs> no Alolan Raichu, unfortunately. And the April rewards for the International Challenge and Rec Battle League are now available to claim. That is the Great Ball Guy shirt, and I really regret not having had the time to battle and get it. You only needed to do one. Only that one. tells you how busy I've yeah, been. Yeah, I know, I know. I I did go get, uh, I did it, I haven't downloaded my shirt though, I need to go do that. Because I really want it, because I think there's a new International Challenge coming later this month as well. Yes. Um, I think they're stepping up how many they're doing just because of the the pandemic. I mean, there's nothing else they can do. So I'm well. I'm also a little sad because, like, typically we got these like fun monthly challenges. Like, it'd be like, here's this fun meta, and now it's just like, hey, go play VGC. And I'm just like, but I want Spooky Cup. Oh, I mean, when you don't have all, when you don't have all the Pokemon. yeah, that's true. It's not as fun to do like a red, white, <laughs> huh, and blue tournament that's a or very something. Good point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be Maybe fair, Isle of Armor. We're only like two months away, less than two months away now from having like an extra hundred or so. Um, mm -mm. Sigma brought up a good point to me that they might like, they might add, say like, Hey, we're adding a hundred new Pokemon in the DLC, which is what like they say on the website, right? Like it's coming with a hundred new Pokemon or a hundred plus new Pokemon with Isle of Armor. Mm -hmm. We can't say a hundred Pokemon. <laughs> uh, he says it comes with, it's coming with like a hundred plus, And he said, you know what they could do though? Like that could be like a hundred plus that are in the decks because the Pokemon being added are still technically separate from the DLC, mm -hmm. right? Like the Pokemon that are getting added to the code are different than the DLCs. Like, you know what they could do? They could have like a, like another like 20, just kind of like they did with, um, uh, oh. what they did with like sword and shield in general, like how there's 35 with in the like code. the Alolan starters. Yeah. With like the, not like, in the decks, yeah, but you exactly. Can get them. Yeah. So you can like maybe like totodiles in the code. But it's not catchable in Isle of Armor. Eh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know either. I mean, he said that, and I'm like, it's not an unbelievable thing to see happen. It's not, but they they need to have something to sell you next year. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm fully expecting another round of DLC in 2021. Um, but I they could honestly what they could do at. And this is this would be super easy if they go, this is the Mega Evolution DLC. <laughs> and, oh. Oh. <laughs> I oh, God. I mean, oh, God. Don't, don't, don't hurt me that way. Yeah, I know. I mean, the Mega Evolution DLC, you don't even need to add Pokemon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, I think you do that. 
And it's just like, here's Mega Evolution. Um, I don't think Mega Evolution is unbalanced in this meta at all. I think you could, I think you could realistically just do pull a Mega Rayquaza with Mega Evolution. Mm. And you go, hey, your Mega Pokemon can't Dynamax. Womp womp. Yeah, of course. On top of that, um, you could go further and just be like, the Dynamax energy is what you use to Mega Evolve. So sad. Uh, <laughs> You can't Dynamax. And they say sorry. We're really, really sorry. Yeah. We're so sorry. Yep. But they won't. I think. Yeah, I, I don't Late know. Late stage yeah. capitalism got me like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a good move. Um, I, I, I'd be interested. I, I think DLC is coming next year, though. I think we're going to see two more. Just because the attach rate for this DLC has been so high. It's mm-hmm. been stupid high. Um, like I think some, somebody did a poll, and I said this on the show before. Somebody did the poll. It was like 80 to 90% of people who own Sword and Shield are getting the DLC. Crazy. That's like a crazy, crazy high attach rate for DLC. Like nobody, nobody has that kind of attach rate. Pokemon will though, um, mm. which is which is just nuts to me. That's just crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it's just, it's crazy. Uh, but yes, uh, let's move on to Pokemon Go, Sublime. Tell me, tell me Pokemon more. Pokemon Go home news, because you don't be going nowhere else, okay? You don't be going <laughs> home. This is what's happening. For the month of May, so starting now, um, it's going to be a special weekly research event called Throwback Challenge. Oh, I love a throwback, you know? And isn't it wild that Pokemon Go is old enough that it, A, has more Pokemon than Sword and Shield, and <laughs> is uh, old enough to have two throwbacks? What? I w- I'll always go there. You I'm, went I'm there. I know you that. will. I know you will. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm much better saying. with the DLC. The DLC makes me feel better. It feel, We'll see. Yeah. We'll see if it exceeds Pokemon Go's number with that. I, it, we'll see. It probably won't it probably until will, the fall. Not until the fall. Not yeah, until the fall. After both, though. Yeah. yeah, after both it will. Um, yeah. So it's going to be, uh, each week is dedicated to a different generation throwback. So currently until the 8th of May, we're doing the Kanto research, which will result in being able to get a Mewtwo special encounter. If you never got that. Also, they're introducing Shiny Venom app because they need it to introduce it somehow. Yeah. yeah. And then from the 8th to the 15th is going to be Johto Research, where you can get a Ho-Oh special encounter and get Shiny Dunsparce, because we all love Dunsparce. And Shiny Dunsparce is adorable. It's, it's just shiny. I just feel like um, the people, the, the audience for Pokemon Go just goes crazy for shiny anything. But it's a really good shiny. Is it? I haven't actually seen Shiny Dunsparce. Is it blue? It's I feel like, like it's blue. instead of the blue, it goes pink. It's oh, great. Oh, that sounds nice. It, for, okay. That's good nice. for Dunsparce. Then it's going to be ho Research. a uh, ho N, not ho No, it's ho ho N That's Research. Ho-O. Oh, well, ho yeah, is yeah, a special research. I'm saying then, after that. Yeah, okay. From the 15th to the 22nd of May will be ho N Research, where you can get a Groudon. And they introduce Shiny Skitty. Oh, that'll be cute. That'll be I cute. hate that it's only Groudon and only ho <laughs> And mm. that you can't get it's the It's like other. they chose... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you got to make decisions. I mean, I hope it happens again, because that'd be really cool if it happens yeah. again and it's flipped, like, later this year. Decisions had to be made. Just because, like... So, like, I have both Ho-Oh and Lugia, but I only have Groudon. I don't have Kyogre. And so that's disappointing for me. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I only have um, Kyogre and not Groudon. Okay, well, that's good Groudon. for you. So I'm excited, yeah. That's it good is. for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, well, Sinnoh's the one letting us all down. Okay. Because from May 22nd to the 29th, you can get Cresselia. To be fair, I don't have Cresselia. I don't care about Cresselia enough to want it. I don't have Cresselia. It's a Pokedex entry. I, I need it for the Pokedex entry, so I'll go get Cresselia. Mm-hmm. I guess. And then they're adding shiny Glamio. I will not evolve that. They will <laughs> say as a Glamio. <laughs> and if you complete all of these events, you will receive an event called the Throwback Challenge Championship Tie-In that runs from June 3rd to the 8th, where you can capture Galarian Meowth. Oh. It's done. Oh. So now that now Galarian I have to do this. Galarian Meowth. Now I have to sit on yeah. my couch and play Pokemon Go. This is how you get the Galarians in uh, Pokemon Go now. Uh, you're going to get the Meowth Stunfisk, Meowth, Zigzagoon, and Darumaka. I'm really upset right now. <laughs> Maybe it'll be really easy to do. I have to go sit on my couch and play Pokemon Go now, and I'm not a fan. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mind. Last night when I couldn't sleep, I caught a, a shiny Teddy Ursa. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah. I love Teddy Ursa. It's so cute. So it's Underrated. Terrible. Mm. But anyway, speaking of research and research breakthroughs, it's a new month, and for the month of May, the research breakthrough reward is Shinx, which which comes with increased candies when you catch it. Yay, I suppose. Um, 
Matt, Shinx is really rare, so that's good. Yeah, no, I'm okay with Shinx doing it. I, I, uh, the thing that I really get a lot now, um, or I see a lot now, is people complaining like, oh, it's just Shinx. I already have Luxray. And it's just like, yeah, but like, you know the people that don't just play the game since 2016 yeah. every day? You like, know people that like have actual hobbies and lives outside of it? Yeah, know? so like they're fine. Like Niantic's doing it. I don't know if it's because they're trying to like get more whales or if it's because they're trying to actually help out like older people. Or newer people to the game, but like they're doing a really good job with it. Like I'm happy with it. Yeah, it's fair. And they've also announced the spotlight hour events for me, and none of them excite me. But whatever. Bronzor is kind of exciting, I think. Uh, I suppose. Um, May fifth, my anniversary. Shelter with double catch Stardust. May twelfth, Sunkern with double catch experience. May nineteenth. Puchiana with double catch candy, and May 26th, Bronzor with double transfer candy. All of the, the last two are kind of, well, the last three are exciting. Everything but Stardust is exciting. I think Stardust is the most exciting one. I like Stardust. I want to trade with if my sister. If you get really high level, if like your high end Pokemon go, I think Stardust is the most desired resource. Really? Yeah. I can believe that. I can believe that. Um, so the thing that we, uh, the other thing that's going on is remote raid passes have been added to the game. Uh, three can be purchased for a single Pokecoin currently as a limited promotion because of, honestly, current situations. But what happens is if you can see a raid, like, on your map, you don't even have to be there. You can just tap on it, and it takes you to that raid. So you can do it from a distance. I think it limits the as number of people As long as you don't currently. live in the boonies, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I can see, like, two or three gems from my house. So, like, I that that's good for me. Like, I, I see raids yeah. there all the time. I'm like, man, I could get out of my bed and walk over there, or I could just stay in my bed. And now I can. So that's that's good news. Yeah, I can't go out and walk over there, so this is really nice for me. Yeah, I think it reduces your damage, though, from what I heard. Like your damage I mean, reduced. like, say yesterday I saw a one-star clink raid. Yeah. I only have two clinks. I might yeah. like to get a third one at some point yeah, absolutely. to have, like, yeah. the full living Pokedex. So I might do that someday. Yeah, no, I think that's a great, I think that's a great thing that they've done. I mean, I, I think being able to do this is fantastic. I hope they do it in the future where, like... If my if I'm fr best friends or just like ultra friends with somebody, I can invite them to a raid that I'm going mm. to because I think yes. that would be really cool. I mean, we're, we're all ultra friends here, I think. Um, mm -mm -mm. And so I could be like, oh, Whimsicott, I'm going to do that. I found this really cool raid. And you could be like, oh, give me one sec. I'll do it. And then yeah. you could just you like we could do it remotely um, because honestly, that's been my biggest gripe with um, Pokemon Go raids um, because they, they expect me to go make Pokemon Go friends. And my friend circles are full. Yeah. Uh, my friend circles are full, Niantic. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> please, please stop at making me make more friends. Uh, all right, Sublime, there's a couple more things. I'll let you, I'll let you take them. And just, uh, like... Yeah, just a couple more things. Darkrai is now the featured raid boss. So you can get a dark rye from your house. That's nice. Uh, I already ha like I already have a couple. It was really. I don't think I ever got one, so that's good. It's good that they keep recycling. Things like it was that. right before uh, Stay at Home went into place. Like they did like that cool, crazy like weekend of like extra dark rye raids or something like that. And I went out with mm -hmm. a friend of mine, like a friend that I already had, not a Pokemon Go friend. See, because you already had a friend. I already had a friend, Niantic. Um, and we went out and we did like a bunch of dark rye raids with some people. Like I caught a shiny one. It was a good time. Mm. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah, and then Niantic has also confirmed that there will be no new Go Rocket events until September, which is good. That needs to happen. Yes, and also love this. If you have an open open daily research slot, it will now automatically fill up at the end of midnight each day, at, and it should amazing. At midnight, yeah, at the end of midnight. Yeah. So yeah. Now you don't gotta go spin nothing. Yeah. There it is. There you go. Well, because the I mean, yeah. I think that was the biggest problem. Exactly. Was like, oh yeah. I really like how I didn't participate, but I loved how they handled uh, community day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's good that they're doing it in a way that you can play at your house. Yeah. Very responsible. I mean, they gotta keep making money. That's how they can get you to still play it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, exactly. But yeah, this is uh, this is most of the news. Um, we're going to have some more giveaways planned for the patrons later this week. Um, the other piece of news is we're only like five iTunes reviews away from 400. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm a greedy, I'm a greedy person and I want to hit 400. So, uh, I want to do like a push for that. So like just small pu minor puckle news, like we'll do like a giveaway for a shiny Pokemon of like the puckle community's choice. Uh, if we hit four, when we hit 400 reviews on iTunes. So that could be like this week. It could be next week. It could be next month. 
but I just want to let, let that go out there. Like, Hey, we're really close. Push us over the edge. The more people that, the more reviews we have, the more people find the show and the more people that find the show, the bigger community we can have and we can do cooler and bigger and better Pokemon things as a community. So I really want to, I just want everybody to know that. But on that note, that is it. We are going to kick it on over to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to a Puckle's Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Sublime and Whimsicott are going to be operating as a team today to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions submitted to us on the Discord in the Trivia Submissions channel. <laughs> that is the only place that we put trivia questions on the Trivia Submissions channel on the Puckle Discord server. Okay, now that that's out of the way, that's where we get these questions <laughs> well, from. Know. They're all Pokemon-themed, by the way. These are all Pokemon-themed trivia questions as well. Not Puckle-themed trivia questions. Pokemon-themed trivia questions. Moving on even further. Uh, welcome to this part of the show. We have five of them. Uh, are each worth one point apiece except for the one question that isn't, depending on how poorly Whimsicott and Sublime are doing. It will be worth two or three points uh, to try to get them back on track. Uh, they will also be getting... A lifeline in the form of a hint that they can use. However, if they get all the questions right without using the hint, they can cash it in for an extra point at the end for a possible total of seven. They are in a race with their fellow co-host to 30 points. Um, whoever gets there first gets a $20 credit to T Public, and you, a trivia submitter who has their trivia read on the show, and it's a good trivia question, will be able to be entered into a raffle to get $20 of credit to AnimeGravy.com, the sponsor of this segment, where you can get any kind of geekdom art that your heart desires. Um, I I actually just bought one of uh, one of their recent like D and D posters. It's like Adventure Awaits. I love mm. their D and D posters. Their D and D posters are great. Twenty looking stuff. Yeah, yeah. Those. Their D and D posters are with really the cool. dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I love their D and D stuff. So it's it's really cool. Uh, so look. Yeah, go over there, look at look around. Maybe you want to submit a trivia question and get some cool art from AnimeGravy.com. On that note, let's go ahead and get started. Our first question today is going to be from... Thatch needs to find Firefox. Um, that is going to be from Murray, and he wants to know, what non-Dragon-type Pokemon has the ability to legally know Draco Meteor? And I will I will put this as a hint that it's from an old event distribution. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, we are obviously cutting out stuff like Smeargle. Do you think yes. it could be something like... Um, Smeargle Arceus? does technically win. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> because it is legal. Yes. Um, yeah. But... <laughs> so, uh, no I feel event. like in Gen 4 they did a lot of like legendary yes. events. Yes. Yes. So I was thinking maybe like a legendary Pokemon or something. They gave it to it like level one, you know? Mm. So if it's uh, Gen 4... I was thinking Arceus. I was thinking Arceus too, but I feel like it's something a little more specific. Um, because it's it's one of those very Japanese events, you know? Oh, do you think it could be um, Jirachi because they do that... Tanabata, oh, whatever, every yeah. year. Yeah, I don't remember it ever getting Draco Meteor. I don't either, but they give everything like a But bunch they of give stuff. it everything. Yeah, like they've had so many events for it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I, I do think it might be either Jirachi or Arceus. I, um, between those two, I'm leaning more towards Arceus. Mm, interesting. I, I was leaning more towards Jirachi after you said it. Um, because it makes more sense. Because Arceus, like, it can do whatever. It doesn't need Draco Meteor. Just give it a plate. Um, it's got judgment. So, um, I don't know. Uh, which one do you want to go with? Uh, I don't know. Which one are you? I don't, I, I don't know. I like Jirachi better. I like your I, idea. Sure. Why not? Okay. Let's go with Jirachi. Jirachi is correct. Okay, Way to go, go. Yeah, it, it's been given away like 
I think six times, six times yes. with Draco Meteor, six times. <laughs> yeah, they always uh, give it something. Random. There was something back yeah. when they used to have mm-hmm. Nintendo Zones, which was a thing for a hot minute, where you could get mm-hmm. Jirachi with Draco Meteor. It was given away at GameStop with it. Uh, Latin America got like their only Jirachi event was the, a Draco Meteor Jirachi. Australian mm. Summer 2010 Jirachi, uh, Japan Summer 2010 Jirachi, and in 2013 at the Tanabata Festival, um, they did wow. uh, they did Jirachi with Draco Meteor, like lots of Jirachis with Draco Meteors. Um, nice. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, Jirachi's given away a lot. <laughs> I love Jirachi so much. All right. So thank you for that one, Murray. Uh, our next one is going to be from, this is a really long question. I don't know if we're going to use it. Uh, we're going to use it anyway. Let's do it. This one is from Shark Finnegan. Outside of Generation 4, there is only one mainline series game that you can obtain both the west side and east side forms of Shellos within the same game. Yeah. All of the other games are either missing at least one form, have version exclusives, or required through multiple playthroughs. Which, I'm going to say, which generation is it? I'm not going to say game. But yes. Okay. Like I you- would think Alola. I would think Gen 7, because you have a bunch of islands, so maybe, like, an island has uh, a different form. So, no. Uh, in Alola, you can only get the blue one. Interesting. Okay. Yes. You can only catch the blue one. Uh, the pink one has to be transferred somehow. Um, that's what I remember. Because I remember thinking, oh, last time they only gave me the pink one, and I like the blue one, and now I get the blue one, and I'm a happy girl. But... Um, that would mean that in Gen 6, we only got the pink one. Um, and so I know you can get the blue ones in Galar, not the right, pink ones right. again. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm What thinking, about Gen 5? Uh, Gen 5, I don't even know if it was ever catchable in Gen 5. Remember, it says obtainable. It says obtainable and not obtainable. catchable. Obtainable. Oh, that's that's a whole nother story, which means it might be something like an in-game trade or hmm. So if it's an in-game trade or a gift or something. Hmm. Yes, if it's an in-game trade, I think it might be Alola. Like there's someone that hmm hmm. I'm thinking either it's Gen 6 or 7. I'm I'm thinking... Uh, so I was thinking if it was Gen 6, the one that was missing might have been in the Friend Safari. That's also but, what I was thinking about the Friend Safari. But, but he said, catchable. Exactly, mm-hmm. it's catchable. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking there might be a, uh, either an in-game trade in Alola, or if you go through the Wormhole in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, you get the other version as a Wild Encounter or something. Oh, okay. I like that But idea. that's also catchable. I don't know. I'm I'm leaning towards Alola. Let's just say that. We have like a one in four chance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go with Gen 7. Yeah, let's go with Gen 7. That's Gen 7 is correct. It in only mm. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Not Sun and Moon, by the way. In the Seafolk mm-hmm. Village, you can trade a Grand Bull for the opposite Shellos. It's, I think it's the oh, West Sea Shellos. Um, as yes. opposed to catching the EC uh, Gastrodon. Yes. So you can get both in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but not in the uh, not in any other game uh, except for. Uh, oh, I guess Gen Six you can catch one or the other, depending on whether you have Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire. Oh, um, probably. Yeah, yeah, that is well. That is true. I, <laughs> it's not a probably. I know the answer, but uh, <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. It was a probably in my head. I didn't know that. Yeah, um, Black and White Two you can do it as well, but it's it's version dependent as well. Okay. Uh, it, it's very cool. I love it. Um, Mm-hmm. All right, so our next uh, question, so thanks to Shark Finn again for that. Our next question is the Pokedex entry, as always. You guys are two for two, so that's actually really good. Uh, so this one is going to come from Missing No 729 It's Pokemon Ultra Moon Pokedex entry reads, In the moment that it gulps down its prey, the inside of its shell is exposed, but to this day, no one has ever seen that sight. Who's that Pokemon? Could you repeat it? In the, moment, in, in the moment that it gulps down its prey... The inside of its shell is exposed, but to this day, no one has ever seen that sight. Who's that Pokemon? And what is the Pokedex? From Ultra Moon. Ultra Moon. Ultra Moon. Okay, something with a shell yeah, from something. Ultra Moon that gulps down its prey. Ooh. Huh. This one's pretty hard. I, If you guys get it, I, I have many kudos for you. 
<laughs> now that he said it, I'm almost tempted to go for the hint. But let's let's use up our minute before that. Like Terminator, maybe. Terminator doesn't it's, gulp I don't know. down things. Uh, what is? Yeah, that is confusing. Yeah. So, um, I was thinking something like a sea creature, like um, I don't know, uh, Toxapex. Uh, may- mm. Ooh, I like that. Has a shell, but, right? But it, but you do see the inside. Do well, maybe you don't. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it, I can't. I'm thinking cloister. Hmm. I like I like cloister, but you do see cloister closed and then opened, and the actual creature is the pearl inside. So you do see mm. inside okay, the I was shell. Maybe there was something it further, like it opens wider. I don't know. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Mm. Maybe. Um. Gaslord has a giant open mouth all the time. You see all the way back to Kansas City. I don't Kansas think it City. has a shell, though. You know? No, it doesn't have a shell. Um, oh, this is really hard. Do you want to use the an hint? Yeah. I'm open to using the hint. We, I think yeah. we might need the hint. Uh, Let's this, do that. Um, man, which, uh, there's, a good, there's a lot of hints I can give you. I just don't want to give it away. Um, let's see. So this is a, uh, a dual-type Pokemon. One of its typings being Steel. Mm. Um, it is also, I will say, it's not a Gen 7 Pokemon. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Uh, steel type with a sh- It's a I'm dual type. I'm thinking Escavalier. Um. Um, because you, but, um. This Pokemon know, has a shirt on original Stitch as well. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. oh, Fortress. Fortress, maybe. <laughs> That that sounds like a good idea, actually. Okay, because listen, if it's got an original stitch, that means it's, it's Gen one gotta be Gen two. If it's mm-hmm. a Steel type, right? Because they only added like what seven Steel types in Gen seven uh, yeah, when it was first it, added. Yeah, uh, so two of it's which not... are Magnemite and Magnetone. Nope. Nope. Steelix. Nope. Nope. Um, yeah, I think it's Fortress. Yeah, it sounds very, very, very plausible. I'm I'm down with that. Fortress is correct. Uh, uh, that's a good. That one. Yeah, that's a, a good. One. That's a hard one. That like I saw <laughs> that. Really and I'm like, hard. But you guys got the first two right, so I didn't feel bad. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, thanks to uh, who is that? That was missing no seven two nine for that one. Uh, so Ooh, our next question is your is your uh, multi two point question. You get two points depending on what you get here. Um, this question is from uh, Claude Nine because the other one that Ruby put there is too hard. I told him that last night. He didn't listen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, which, uh, any, so what, uh, Claude wants to know is which moves in generation eight that will hit with, uh, w- that will hit with double power on a Pokemon that uses minimize. Um, there are how many moves here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, if you name four of them, I'll give you two points, two points per move or for two, okay. one point per two moves. Stomp. stomp. <laughs> and that's the easy one. That's an easy we one. We know stomp. Yeah. Yes. Uh, then, Maybe body slam. Uh, it might be. Might also be body press. Um, I think there was one that I oh I heard about this one and I thought it was funny for some reason. Pulverizing mm. pancake. Oh wait, I mean, that's a different generation. <laughs> Never mind. That's not allowed. Okay, so um, um it was um. Like uh, maybe high horsepower or something. Like I know, I'm, I want to think it's like a ground type move that's not earthquake for some reason. Hmm. Stomp. So stomp. Well, you need okay, one so, more to get another point. So yes. stomp. <laughs> uh, I wanna. I want to say. I'll give you like you can body- do like three guesses that are wrong. Okay. We'll, do you want to go with body slam and body press? Because I think we sound- should guess both of those because those both sound yes. like they could uh, be. Yes. Body right. slam is correct. Body press okay. is not. Okay. Right, um, so you have two. one point. You have one point. So you have two. Okay. Yeah. You need to come up with two more moves. There's six left. Uh, okay. Geez. I wanna. I want. How are there so many moves to do that? I wanna say like hammer arm and wood hammer because it's hilarious. <laughs> Should we try one of those and see if it's right? Um, yeah, let's try one of those. Okay, so let's say hammer arm. Hammer arm is incorrect. Oh, okay. okay. So okay, probably so wood no hammer hammers. is also wrong. Right. Um, let's see. So you have stomp, body slam. What's something else where you crush or smash someone? Hmm. 
Crush Claw. That that sounds nice, but also like, mm, why would you use like? Um, why would you use stomp? You know. I mean, stomp. You stomp on a bug because it's shiny. Well, you crush you know? something in your hands because it's been minimized. Mm, yes, that, that makes I sense. I uh, let me think. I think there was a like a ground type move like oh what about tiller. heavy slam i feel like heavy slam Ooh, would double yes uh, either a heavy slam or rototiller something like that does rototiller do damage i don't think it does although okay I don't know. so it's probably not that all right so um i let's... think heavy slam is a good yeah, yes i like it let's go with that heavy slam is correct that's three you okay need one more. okay you get all right. Ooh. 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 the pressure is on um uh, oh, well, shoot. you know what? If Heavy Slam counted, maybe Heat Crash does. Oh, why wouldn't it? It's like yeah. a fire type version of that. Yeah. We got Heat Crash? Heat Crash is correct. We did it! Okay! Oh, uh, the, right. the four you were missing <laughs> The four you were missing were Dragon Rush, Steamroller, Flying oh. Press, and Double Iron Bash. Steamroller is the one I was thinking about. I am very happy we came about. up with what we came up with yeah then. you guys yes. got you guys got two points though so far so you guys are oh five for four right now five for four uh so next question is your base stat question uh as always so this next question is from polywo which flying type pokemon has the highest base defense okay uh, okay let's start um, with let's start with ho ho <laughs> because this uh, is always Ho-Ho a good guess is what 130 uh something in that vicinity um I think it's 130. Okay. Uh, flying type of... So that's uh, higher than Gliscor, because Gliscor wait, is 125. Wait, 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 Skarmory. Skarmory is 140, that's right. Is there mm-hmm. anything above 140? Uh, how much does hard. Corviknight have? I think it's more mixed, less. right? It's definitely less. Like, yeah, it's got okay. good mixed bolt, but it's not, like, skyrocketing mm-hmm. in anything. Okay. Is there uh, some, I don't know, flying type mega that's super defensive for some stupid reason? Um, I don't think... Most of the flying type megas were really offensive, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think Burst Skarmory spam. probably is what it is, because 140 is really high. That's really, really high. Uh, let's yeah. give ourselves a moment in case if we If it was special defense, it would be Lugia and Ho-Oh, but for regular defense, I think it's Skarmory. I think you were yeah. right. Yeah, it it sounds like it's right. So let me let me think. Um, so the genies don't get that high. Um, that one is all HP. Like all of the legendary Pokemon I can think about are not high defense like that. No, not like that. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Skarmory is a steel type, so usually Skarmory is like all defense and nothing else is impressive about it <laughs> exactly but it's, so I it's think that's really a good high guess. yeah 140 yeah like yeah it's really i high. so that's offensive that is also very offensive and i cannot for the life of me i think, think we should just get anything Skarmory. else yes yeah i'm yeah. done with that Skarmory is correct Mm-hmm. You, you guys do. got six points today. Nice. Um, so in the, that changes up the standings, obviously, because we just restarted. So in first <laughs> place, we have Sublime with 11 points, followed by P. McGee and Whimsicott tied in second with six points, followed by fourth place Seth with five points, and then everybody else has yet to get on the board. Welcome <laughs> to the game. All right. So that is it for Puckle's Pokey Quiz. We are going to take a short break and be right back at you guys with the topic. We have another five-star review this week from Wooly Mammoth on iTunes. Great pod. Listen every day. This is one of the few pods I listen to when they drop. Great pod through and through. Keep the content and the great work. And thank you for my new shiny butt stallion from your stream. You guys rock. Five stars. Well, thanks, Wooly Mammoth. Again, we're only five reviews away from hitting 400 reviews on iTunes, so if you can go and listen to us over there and review us, we'd really appreciate it. But with that, let's move on to the topic. And welcome to the topic. The topic this week is types. What do they mean? What are they? <laughs> What's up with types? What's up with those things? What, what, we are, what, are, what are we thinking about types lately? You know? what, are, what are types? What are types? I mean, this is more of like a smorgasbord because like we all had different ideas about typing and things about it. About types. Yeah. Uh, I think Wimsy got a really interesting like point to start off with, though. So I'll, yes. let, I'll let her jump into that. 
Okay, so did you want me to start off with the first point I made yes, to you? The second, I don't know. The whichever one you want. <laughs> you have been thinking about recently. Just whatever yeah. one, and then I we can jump into. I rambled a lot off the air. Yeah, yeah, whichever uh, one. I, okay, so um, I was playing Shield, and I realized there are not a lot of grass types in the Galar decks, uh, by which I mean, you know, new grass yeah, yeah, types. Yeah, yeah. Galar, born. Um, th- what, what are they? It's like Eldegoss and like... Eldegoss and the uh, Apple family oh, Apple. and the startup. Okay. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's yeah, boring. That's, that's really boring. That's, that's, yeah. And as you know, I'm a big fan of grass types. And I was like, oh, we have another Gen 4 fire type situation. And then I realized... Not really. When I was, when I was playing through the game the first time, I went There's plenty through of glass the entire... Yeah, no, if you, but I only use new Pokemon when I play through a new generation for the first mm-hmm. time. Same, mm-hmm. same. So, um, and when I played through Gen 8 the first time, I could not find the fire type that I liked to put on my team because it I was all about way. the Carcal and the Scorch, and I did not choose Scorbunny because I'm Sobble Squad and I, I didn't have a fire type and I felt bad i was like i've always had a fire type and grass types and they're like my staple types and and i finished the game with a bunch of typings that i really would not have considered having in previous games like i had a bug ice type a ghost type i had a fighting type it was very weird for me Mm. and it got me thinking types I think either have a different meaning now than they had back in the first generations or kind of mean the same thing, but we are approaching them in a different way. Because, you know, even competitively, when you play red and blue and they're teaching eight-year-old you how to Pokemon, they tell you, oh, it's all about type matchups. And... Even now, when I'm blah, blah, blah years old and I'm trying to put together a team, I'm like, oh, I have a fire type weakness. I need a water type on my team. And then I make a team and the team sucks. And I'm like, why does it suck? And then I go online and I see Aaron Zeng playing with like four rock types <laughs> and winning. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so I, I think I'm approaching this from the wrong perspective. Well, I think to, uh, relating to what your point is, is like when you first start trying to think about what, how you want to make a team and you're new to it, you think, how do I cover every single type? And yeah, you think I, once think, you're more I think that's a- You don't ask that question. You ask, how am I going to win? Or just like, what does this Pokemon accomplish rather than just exactly. what's the type? Yeah, I think, I think- And types can be yeah. an avenue to do that, but they don't mm-hmm. have to be exclusively through that. Because I think I think something that if you just think about types, you're just trying you're trying to boil down 890 Pokemon into 18 categories with types, Mm-mm. and I don't think that's entirely appropriate. I mean, we were talking about it in between the show with Tyranitar as the example, right? I mean, right. So so Tyranitar has got you know a ton of weaknesses. So that, many weaknesses. It's like when you think about its type, it seems like a bad type. I mean, Tyranitar has got. I mean, it's rock dark type. So I mean, it's weak to water. It's weak to ground. It's weak quad to grass. It's weak to fairy. Weakness. It's got quad fighting weakness. I mean, it has as many weaknesses as a grass type. Tyranitar is still really good. Um, Tyranitar accomplishes a lot of things, and it's. Uh, I mean, Tyranitar throughout like the generations, like I would say from like Gen four onwards, has done a variety of different roles, and that's just because. Um, Tyranitar, Tyranitar can accomplish different things depending on what situation yeah. you want to put him in. And I, I think that's something that, I mean, it's an evolution of just competitive Pokemon. You, you steer, you steer away from types and you steer towards the Pokemon. You learn to categorize the Pokemon differently than just with the types. Mm-hmm. I think, I think it's a good, I think it's a good, like, starting tool for competitive. Yeah. And it's not like type doesn't matter either. I think what make, propagates it and makes it worse is, like, you have these things like, uh, Maryland's team builder, quote unquote. Oh, yeah. Where, like, you go and you put the Pokemon and it's like, well, you're really weak to fire types. And it's like, yeah, but you see, this one Pokemon can pretty much just destroy them anyway. So who cares yeah. if I'm weak to fire types? And so it'd be like it'd be like saying, oh, you're weak to fire types. You're like, but no, I have a Terrakian, so I think I'll be OK. But th- <laughs> that's a completely different story. Uh- it's also that, you know, for a long time, types had sort of a competitive identity like you think of electric types and they're frail, they're fast, they're special attackers. 
You think of grass types. They heal themselves, they bother opponents, they tank. And then it changed. Well, so, okay, so you want the real answer to that? So you, you're building these these stereotypes off the types based off of, like, their original I- existence. Like, I but would there's say, been so many iterations. No, it's not even that. It's not even that. Like, you're, you're just saying, like, oh, man, electric types are special attackers, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, yeah, I would agree with you up until Gen 4 when we had the spe- special physical split. But that's just because you liked Electivire. Uh, no, 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 so. that's not why. That's not why. Like, special, <laughs> I mean, even Luxray was introduced in that generation as a physical attacker. I mean, I'm not just talking about electric types. I'm just talking in general. I mean, it, it, that re, the physical special split changed what typing was because it was no longer like, oh, I'm a water type, so water type attacks do special damage. Rock type moves do physical damage here now. I mean, I guess they're, rock's a terrible choice because, like, you have power gem as the special option, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but like fighting moves, like you have focus blast now as a special option or a sphere, stuff like that. And before we didn't have any of that. It was like, yeah, you're, they're punching things. They're a physical attack. It, it's a it's a problem for us. Maybe not so much for the newer generations of Pokemon players, um, because I mean, we grew up with it and we have these like preconceived notions from Gen Gens like one through three, where they definitely mm-hmm. follow that stereotype. I I don't think that that's incorrect to think that, especially based on those three generations where. They were basing the attacks off the types themselves, yeah. And the type of damage, and so I think I think that's definitely like I I think part of that because even then, none of, I don't think any of us were playing competitive at that point. But uh, I think that's a preconceived notion that's just like we stuck in kids. our brains. <laughs> but I would argue that the types had a play style attached to them, at least. Yeah, I I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, I don't disagree with that, and I think that's again just based on move pool. And it, now we our move pools have expanded significantly. Mm-mm. Well, not anymore. They did the culling of the moves. But to be fair, who needs jump kick when you have high jump kick? Um, <laughs> no, okay, like true. That. But uh, I'm thinking for for such a long time you could only do leech seed with grass types, yeah. and then last generation yeah. we we had Celesteela running around leech seeding everything, and that nothing made sense anymore. Yeah. Okay, so, but we don't true. talk about Celesteela. Celesteela is like <laughs> Celesteela is like a dark mark in Pokemon history. Um, whether or not Seth will accept that as an answer or not, but that, I mean it <laughs> was matter. it was a dark mark in Pokemon yeah. history. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, Celesteela was just because it was, uh, yeah, it, it was it was a weird Pokemon in general. But I mean, yeah, no, you have Pokemon that could run different moves, and I think we've shifted from this type centric focus to like a Pokemon design centric focus, which is cool. Yeah, I like I that. Think that. I like the that. more Pokemon we have, like the greater variations Diversity, we're yeah. going to have of what we consider yeah. what a type should have been originally. Oh yeah, I think that helps. Yeah. I I like that. I play. I prefer that as well. I mean, it kind of also reminds me of like walking into Pokemon and being like, "Yeah, I should have as many moves at the same type as possible as the Pokemon because stabs mm-hmm. really good." I mean, one of my one of my like most defining notion like memories is like I don't even want to say as a competitive Pokemon player, but just as, like a Pokemon memory in general. So like um, Nintendo Power. This is this is dating me. Um, the mm-hmm. magazine that Nintendo used to send out on a very daily ba- or a ver- uh, like on a monthly basis for the longest time, I think it was for the first two or three generations of Pokemon, ran a specific section in their magazine called like the Pokemon Corner or something like that, Pokemon Center or something like that. I forget exactly what it was called. I have the magazine sitting behind me. I can always look. But And what they would also do is they would rate people's teams. People would send in their teams and they would talk about them. Uh, which was just like I remember to, this. To, yeah to like ten year old me that's a really during cool Gen thing. Two was this during Gen Two? Uh, it did they did it from Gen Two to like Gen or Gen One to like Gen mm. Three I think. I remember it during Gen Two a little bit. Yeah. I I remember it, but one of the things that happened to me was so like the, um for those of you who are also unaware like competitive Pokemon did have like a circuit quote unquote even in Gen One they actually brought on like the uh, there there was like a week where they brought on just like a generic like. Some kid sent us his team, and then here's the guy who just won the world championships equivalent at the Times team the next mm. month. You can just see a drastic difference between the teams because uh, one of the things that they said to me was that they said that stuck with me was because, like, some kid had a Blastoise on his team, and he's like, Rate my team, and Blastoise has like Hydro Pump and Surf and stuff like that. And mm. and to eight year old like me, I'm like, yeah, that's my Blastoise. And then the magazine's like, it's probably not worthwhile having both of those. You should just pick one or the other, and then put this other move on there, and then you have better coverage. Mm. I, I think that's something we don't think and about. And then you discovered the idea of coverage. I remember as a kid, like my big aha moment, like playing Gen One. It yeah, was, I think it might have been like Pokemon Yellow. Is like, oh, non attacking moves are good. Yeah, yeah, like being able when to sword shield, sword dance. Yeah. yeah. 
and being able to like knock things out. I've I've only more recently, like I'm talking like in my adult life, been like X attack's not a bad item to play through with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that, like I had that, I had that from, I had that happen as like an adult. <laughs> oh, I can just use that and not have to worry about like having Swords Dance on my Pokemon. Cool. Uh, yeah, sounds good. I'll use X attack. Uh, this turn. Um, so like I, I've had those moments recently, but yeah, I think, I think it's one of those things like you have to, in terms of typing and like learning competitive and stuff like that, it's definitely a process. Like, I don't think I would be where I am in the understanding of how to play Pokemon without like all of those years of aha moments. Like I've had, I've, there's like oh, been yeah. aha moments for years. Like it hasn't been and there's like aha moments for types, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think yeah. that's true. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't say that that isn't true at all. I mean, it, I think for me, it's more like you develop as a player, right? Types are a really good place. Like, it's just like, here's a good way to archetype Pokemon. And not to mention, you still have like that very comp, uh, not very, but you have that complicated rock, paper, scissors matchup Mm -hmm. system that I think most of us still have memorized. I still mess up a couple of them. The one that Bo used to yell at me about all of the time Mm -hmm. was he, I would be like, yeah, fighting resist ground. And he'd be like, no, it doesn't, Thatch. Fighting does not resist ground. <laughs> and, and that's the only way I remember it now. It's just Bo berating me. <laughs> that's how I remember it. Well, I mean, probably, because doesn't fighting resist rock? Yeah. I, 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 yeah. yeah. So yes. you think, oh, rock, ground. I can see how yeah. someone would think that. Yeah. So like, yes. I always get, I always get it confused. I always got it confused until, and, but now I just have that like in my head. Uh, no. It's just, yeah. it's just there. It's just Bo yelling at me. Uh, but I think I think you bring up an interesting point. Like now, I think of learning how to Pokemon as learning math. Like you learn your fractions, which are types, yeah, and then you're ready to move on to I don't know, elevating thing to the power of X and square roots and stuff. But you're still using fractions. You go but... from fraction to like algebra, exactly. Yeah, and you you still use all of that, but you couldn't have gotten to the point where you're using more advanced stuff if you hadn't learned your fractions properly. Yeah. No, no, I mm-hmm. I mean, ty- like, even when you get to the point where you're just like, I have to worry about certain Pokemon, I don't have to worry about specific types. You do calcs for that Pokemon, not for the type. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. but, but even when you get to that point, like, type matchups are still, I mean, they're somewhat important because uh, the thing that never goes away in terms of team building, I think, and just, just won't, maybe in VGC it's not as important, but uh, even then, I think, to an extent... Uh, VGC is just a different beast in general compared to something like singles. But like if we're let's let's go to OU for example. Like let's go to OU singles. Uh, cores are very prevalent. Yeah. And cores are pretty much like here's a defense a set of typings that are really good in defensive synergy with you with each other. And typing is is more relegated to a defensive synergy than an offensive synergy at this point. Yes. Which is I mean so they're still important. Like you might still want a fire water grass core or a fairy steel dragon core or something of that of that nature. Yeah, it's like. You you need to remember that typing exists, otherwise you end up like Whimsicott when she did draft like that one time and half her team had a quadruple weakness. Yeah, it's it's like poke it's just Pokemon. Like um I mean that's the game. Typing's important to understand in general. And like I think I think if you're gonna use any category to categorize Pokemon in like your first outing in competitive, I think typing is the one to use. It's the easiest one. It's right there on the paper. Yeah, I, I think that is the best one to use because it's still important even when you get to those higher level of play, higher higher levels of play. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, let's try to get as many Pokemon that cover different types. I mean, that's how I built my first competitive team. I like was just like, let's make sure I have a resistance for everything and I can hit everything else super effectively. And, and that's how I built mine. The game does teach you to think like that because they divide gym leaders up by types. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. they even make it kind of like an identity thing. Like, I am a water type trainer. I love the sea. I love water type Pokemon. That is my aesthetic, if you will. If we want to say, you I, know? Think, I think this is a good place to segue into something like slightly different for outside of for the competitive. I, I personally don't think typing, like, because we were talking about how typings like had like, hey, the particular play style. Mm-hmm. I would argue that now that's not as true. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, we all agree that. I, I think it's time to. Um, get gym leaders away from that and just like Pokemon game design. Yeah, it's cool. It's easy to be like, hey, it's this type and then you go catch whatever wild Pokemon. But I think it'd be cool to be like, this This uh, gym leader is actually based on this type of battle style, right? I don't think they'll ever do that. And the reason why is because there are always going to be people new to Pokemon. Yeah. 
So I don't think doing gym, like you can still have a couple gym leaders that are based on type, but I don't think you should make that the main gimmick. I, I don't think that's nearly as exciting. And especially after, you know, 20 some years, like, yeah, you've done that. Like, obviously. Yeah. But if you think about it, like Sublime has a point, like even in Alola, they didn't even have gyms, but the trial were still type based. Yeah. I don't think, I, I, I'm not saying that's good either. Right. So. No, no, but I mean, right, like, there will always be like people who are young kids that are new to Pokemon, and you need the. I I don't think you need to baby children it. like that. Um, I listen. There's a reason they use fire, water, and grass for the starters. I I think no. I'm not saying that's not a bad. I'm not saying something like that's a bad idea. I think you could do something like a. Uh, if you really want to like pound home the idea of like type advantages, you can do that for a gym or two. Like you could do a uh, you could do a Gen Five situation with like Crest, Chili, and mm-hmm. Silen, and be like, hey, you pick this starter. Oh, here's another Pokemon of the type that's super effective to the Pokemon you're about to go fight. That's super effective to your starter. Mm-hmm. Here's a, here's like a type triangle. And you get introduced to that. And then you go to the next one. And it's just like, hey, I'm about statuses. I'm going to teach you about status oh, effects and Pokemon. Okay, so so type is, yeah, the first of eight gimmicks. Yeah. It's just like the first of eight gimmicks. You could just t- you could add it onto the like the gimmick thing, and you could be like, "Oh, hey!" I don't think they're ever going to do. That. Oh, they're never going to do it. But this would be a much better game. Um, oh, it would so, be very cool. Eh. Uh, it would be a much better. I think. I think even as a child, like it would be cool because, like, you, you, let's let's like go back to Gen One, and you could think of something like Koga. So first of all, let's talk about Koga. Let's talk about Koga. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we really want type gym leader Thatch. Koga. How many poison type Pokemon did Koga have in Generation One? Answer this question for me. Anybody know the answer? Because the answer is zero. Zero? I think no, 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 I think he had a Venomoth. I think he had a Venomoth. Yeah, he had, Venomoth. He had a Venomoth. Uh Didn't or he have no. an Arbok or a Weezing? I don't no, know. no, no, that was in no, that was no. in, if you're thinking of yellow, that's different. Yellow's yellow's teams are different, but like Koga Koga may have he only had a Venomoth. Let me double check. He he had like no like ba- like if you went through his gym, all of the trainers in that gym ran drowsies and hypnos. Because all yeah. they were trying to do was poison you. And drowsy and mm-hmm. hypno got poison gas. And that was the entire gimmick of that gym was, hey, I'm going to poison you. And I think that works out really well because we all remember him having like wheezings and stuff. And he just did not <laughs> like, like he just did it. He, di- he didn't have a goal bat. I don't know. He didn't have a goal. Let, let me pull up his. I, I pulled him up. Um, so in red, red and blue, original red and blue. Uh, oh, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I am incredibly wrong. Uh, he had a uh, coughing, muck, coughing, wheezing. Never mind. I was incredibly um, so wrong. So all poison. So all poison. Yeah, but if he, every other trainer, okay. every other trainer in in uh, in that gym didn't have a poison type, I know that I, for I a mean, fact. We, we all know the real imposter in Gen One was Agatha. Uh, that, that is true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is Agatha true. Was basically a poison. The poison type elite four <laughs> Agatha member. Agatha was the poison elite four member all along. <laughs> So I'm incredibly wrong. That was wrong. Uh, but if you do go through the gym, if you do go through, um, if you do go through the, uh, oh my gosh, Fuchsia City gym, every other trainer in the Fuchsia City gym only has like drowsies and hypnos. Like no joke. I'm oh, yeah, not even yeah. kidding you. No, no, no. I, I, I remember it. I believe that. I think it's very on brand to just be like, hey, I'm going to poison you. And you could do something like, you could do something like that. Like, hey, my gimmick's that I'm going to try to poison you. Mm-hmm. I mean, they kind of did that with the dragon type gym in yeah. Sword and Shield. Uh, yeah. No, the dragon type gym. The I think I think the dragon type gym is probably one of the best gyms in Sword and Shield because of that reason. It tried to have a gimmick outside of outside of types. It had two actually. It had double because battle it was also and doubles. weather. He was yeah. a, he was essentially he was essentially a ground type gym leader. But we can talk about that another day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was but yeah, him saying like, "Hey, I'm a dragon type gym leader," and then not having all dragon types and just having like these cool gimmicks that he's trying to use. I think that was fantastic. That was one of the things I praised about Sword and Shield when it came out, and I'm Mm-mm. still praising. I think that was done very well. And I would like to see more of that. I would love to see, like I said, like, hey, here's the type matchup gym. Here's the gym that tells you about this. If you really wanted to breeze through the game right now, you could go ahead and go, hey, I'm just going to go collect a bunch of Pokemon in the route beforehand that, that are of the type that's super effective to the gym I'm about to face. And you can get through it very easily, get it done very easily, be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. That's something, I guess. Um, I don't think Pokemon games need to hold your hand quite that much. They didn't in Gen 1 or Gen 2. They're already holding our hand throughout the whole story anyway. So, like, let me have a little bit of something, right? Yeah. And and, and I think that's something that they could add. You and it would be very easy just to, like, not to get rid of just, like, type-based gyms, but to just make the gyms more yeah. interesting. Like, give them, like, a different different flavor. Because types don't mean the same thing that they did in, in 1998. Mm. Yeah. You know what? Now that you've mentioned it, what with the second-to-last gym yeah. being the one with no Dynamax capabilities... 
It's like, you can almost see that that was the idea. Like, the first three gyms are the classic uh, fire, water, grass core, and then you start moving away from that. And the second half of the gyms are the gimmicky gyms. But then, you know, the second half of Sword and Shield was done in like half a day. So they didn't have time to flesh that out. Uh, Sword and Shield's a sandwich that's all bread. That's how I describe Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield is like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich where they ran out of jelly and there was like a tiny little drop at the bottom of the jar and they were like, well, it technically counts as a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. (laughs) Yes, that's a very good way to put it. (laughs) They had the foundation. They didn't have the filling. I can say that much. (laughs) I think Sword and Shield had to be the way Sword and Shield was. Like, I don't think you could go from, hey, we had trials to now we're back to gyms and then be like, but the gyms are different. Uh, I mm. mean, the game are, the games already had some blowback, but they still sold well because I don't think I they think should, they I think if you would have done that on top of everything things, else like, they did, though, yeah, like it would just be like way more like, like people would can be complaining about it. I would be sitting here praising it. I yeah. think other people would be like, I, I think wait, and I, I'm the person that would be praising it, but I'm also the person that was upset about other things that they did, other decisions they've made. I think the people that were completely 100% happy with Sword and Shield would have been the ones that were just like, well, this was kind of different and didn't like the change. Mm. I mean, you can see you can see it like if they had done it and if that was their intention, it would have been a step in the right direction because you have normal gyms that are tied to types, but you're sneaking in the gimmick concept at the same time. That's what I would want. I think you need to keep the type, but you can add gimmicks. Yeah, I, well, I think Raihan just was like a perfect example of Which what I wanted to Which is what the Dragon Gym is. I think, know, so. I think, um, I, I think just having mm-hmm. this really cool, like, oh, I'm a dragon type gym leader, but not a dragon type gym leader <laughs> is really cool. Can we also take a moment to say that the fact that Raihan, who is a serious competitive player who thinks about strategies and stuff, cannot ever beat the dumb kid with the dumb Charizard, and that's just a representation of what is wrong with the Pokemon franchise as a whole. I just think it's really, really, really cool that Raihan, Raihan is just like, he is the the biggest coolest thing and i think we could do something like that if we if we move types away like from the central focus of gyms because there are, there is more to pokemon i mean like like we said like status conditions are like really big in pokemon you could have double battle gym like we did here i mean even with like lisa and tate type ju- double battle gym is cool too yeah Gr- maybe we don't need as many gimmicky pokemon that are just the same pokemon twice Though, for double battles, Plessal and Minum, Solrock and Lunatone, Volbeat and Lumines, uh, maybe, maybe we don't need that. Uh, that that's okay. Oh, we, we don't goodness. need that. That's fine. I'm okay without those Pokemon. <laughs> but uh, it would be, it'd be really cool to see something like that. I don't know. Like, you could, you, I think you could pull out eight strategies and make that a thing. I think you could do that. I mean, especially if you just like parse yeah. out the status conditions on top of that. Like if you were just like, this is toxic, this is paralysis, this is confusion. I don't think there should be a whole gym dedicated to No, paralysis. but like, like now you do like you do have enough stuff. Like you have terrains, you have weather, you have status, you have types, you have double battles, you have uh, um I don't know, whatever. You, you you're starting to have enough stuff. I think with ice type gyms, like you could really pull off an ice type gym that's all about hail. Yeah, Aurora Veil and hail and yeah. Or you could have uh, something like um, abilities that do weird stuff. You know, there's, there's like, plenty of material. That's just something really cool. Um, You could even yeah. do something stupid yeah. uh, that's not anything that matters at all and do something like the inverse battles and do make that a gym. Like this gym's an inverse battle. That is hard, but it was fun and you could do it. That that's a really hard one though. It died with Gen Six. It was only it was only like one trainer anyway. I thought it should have kept going. I thought that was like their most inspired idea for like you know how they always try to come up with some unnecessary mm-hmm. new battle type every generation. I thought Inverse was the smartest one they had in a long time. Sky battles, guys. Sky like Sky battles. <laughs> sky battles was such a bad idea. Yeah, we don't need sky battles. We don't need sky battles. But I did love it was Inverse so battle dumb because it made Ice good defensively. As like, what world are we <laughs> living in? A world where Avalug has a chance. You know, Inverse battles are great. I wish like that they were still around. Exactly. Like you know what we don't need? We don't need rotation oh, no. battles, but we do need inverse battles. And triple battles weren't bad. Triple battles were okay. Yeah. Yes. Good riddance. 
Actually, don't triple battles still exist? I thought they did. No, they just break. They break the system. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's it's also the yeah. thing like you have to think um, too many because Pokemon. the reason they got rid of it in yeah, Gen yeah, Seven yeah. is because the do. one thing that we all like praised like when Gen Seven came out, they're just like, look, the trainers on the field with the Pokemon. At that moment, I yeah. go, so they already, so every battle's got the processing power of a double battle. And I'm like, hmm, I wonder how they're going to handle three, six Moltres. Mm -mm. And then they're just like, we're just not going to. And, and I'm just like, okay, that's a good way to do that. Exactly. Uh, that's a good way to, like, because, like, the icing on the cake would have been like, oh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna let you also have this Moltres costume on at the same time as, like, the six Moltres battle. Do you, do you think that's why in Gen 7 the terrains completely cover the battle background? Uh, possibly, yeah. So that's that's they, they very were very smart good about it. Like, the they, 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 they're finding ways around it. <laughs> yeah, it took it took me like four years to figure it out. So good job. <laughs> uh, but on that note, this is a good place to stop. Uh, we will uh, we'll wrap it up here, and uh, we'll uh, take a we'll take a short break, guys. We'll yell at you about some ramen, and we're gonna kick it on over to the Pokemon of the episode. We'll catch you on the flip flop. Hey guys, Seth Philo cutting in to tell you about something awesome that I've been absolutely loving, Vite Ramen. If you guys know me, you know I have a borderline noodle addiction, and part of that love has always been a guilty pleasure for ramen. Well, Vite Ramen is ramen, but get this, it's actually good for you. You heard me right. The guys at Vite Ramen have spent years making ramen that's nutritionally complete, and I absolutely adore it. Each bowl has 30 grams of protein, which is more than your average protein shake, 7 grams of fiber, all 27 key vitamins and minerals that you need, and most importantly, tons of awesome flavor. Oh yeah, and did I mention it still only takes 4 minutes to prepare? It's basically still instant ramen. You can head over to VitRamen.com and pick up soy sauce chicken, garlic pork, and my favorite, vegan miso flavors, as well as handy utensils and other such stuff. And here is the coolest part. At checkout, enter code PUCKLE and you'll get 10% off your entire order. That's P-U-C-L, all caps, for a whopping 10% off. Anyway, I gotta get back to rating, and you've got a show to finish. Catch you guys on the flip-flop. <laughs> Episode. And welcome to the Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number 003, Venusaur, the seed Pokemon. Its Pokedex entry from Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum says, After a rainy day, the flower on its back smells stronger. The scent attracts other Pokemon. So Venusaur's rain shake brings all the boys to the yard? <laughs> And yet it's always used on sun teams. <laughs> okay, so I would like to point out, just for, like, everybody that ever listens to this podcast, and it's just, like, Charizard's the best Pokemon ever, because um, there are those people. Ryan. <laughs> so, competitively, fun fact, ever since Generation 1, the best Kanto starter has been Venusaur. Like, the most consistently oh, yeah. higher tier, highest tier uh, Kanto starter has been Venusaur. Fun fact. But Thatch, what about Mega Charizard? Mega Venusaur was just as good as Mega Charizard. Fight me. <laughs> oh, I know. I was just playing Devil's Advocate. I know. Fight me. Uh, <laughs> Mega Venusaur has been, like, consistently the best Kanto starter since Generation 1. Like, fun fact, every single time. Like, Blastoise has always been... Well, Blastoise ha gets... Blastoise and Charizard swap for second. Um, but I would say some, I would say between those, like, it, it's never like a close second and third. It's, <laughs> it's, they're always very far apart. Like Blastoise, Mega Blastoise is worse than Mega Charizard by a long shot. Yeah. But like. But before Mega. But before Mega's Blastoise was probably better than Charizard. Blastoise had rapid spin. What did Charizard have besides a quad stealth rock week? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Blastoise had more use before Charizard got its Mega as well. So it, it swapped. But Venusaur has always been really good. I mean, outside of its Mega. The original dual type starter. Yeah. Uh, rip Mega Venusaur. But uh, regular Venusaur actually has good stats still. I mean, base HP of 80, base attack of 82, base defense of 83, special attack and special defense of 100, and a base speed of 80. Not bad. 
Chlorophyll is what saves it. Chlorophyll yeah. makes a good... 80 is not a bad... It would not be good today if it weren't for chlorophyll. Yeah, chlorophyll helps because you're going to double that speed, and that's really big. And, Mm-mm. I mean, that puts Venusaur on a speed tier, which allows it to dominate with that base 100 attack. And it's... Yeah, I mean, Poison Type's gotten better offensively with the additional oh, theory. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, grass isn't bad. And this gen, for some reason, they gave Venusaur Earth Power. <laughs> For some reason, for very well deserved reasons. It had reasons. earthquake before. It had earthquake, it? So but like, not earth power. So why not? So why not? Like I because mean, now it can utilize not? it can utilize its special attack for both its ground attack move for its ground attack Mm-mm. move. Now you don't have to run mixed Venusaur. There used anymore. to be physical. Re- there used to be physical Venusaur though. So like there did fine. used to be. There did used to be, but now you don't even have to worry about it. Physical school Venusaur yeah. doesn't exist anymore. It's fine. Yeah, you don't need it. Doesn't even get knockoff anymore. So. Yeah, it doesn't have knockoff. Nothing has knockoff anymore. <laughs> Uh, because they cleansed the knockoff Pokemon, thankfully. Uh, I mean, they, like they did a lot of things to try to really balance the meta this gen, and I think I think reducing the number of knockoff users really helped. I also think uh, removing hidden power honestly really helped. Like I was scared about that. I'm still scared about that, mostly just for unknown. I want unknown mm-hmm. to come back. I want him to have a life. Uh, so. Yeah, unfortunately, Unknown doesn't get to do that but uh, right now, but maybe they'll figure out a thing for Unknown. I'm kind of hoping that they're just like, it turns into like a curse situation where like every Pokemon that has hidden power like can't use it, but Unknown's yeah. fine. Unknown's good. Yeah. And I'm I'm hoping for that to happen because I want I want Unknown to come back in and I really think like in the Crown Tundra, it'd be really cool to just have like Unknown Dungeons again where you go try to catch them all. Yeah. I don't know why I enjoy that, but I like catching all the letters. Because you like... Cereal as a child? Uh, cause I, I like, because I like catching Pokemon. I think that's, <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I like catching Pokemon. But let's j- dive into this team. This is from a person named Cobalt in uh, Japan. <laughs> yeah. It's a doubles VGC team with Venusaur. So you can start so, as, yeah. I think the star of the team was supposed to be Charizard, but no, the star of the team <laughs> today is Venusaur because we are not boring champion people like Leon. So, uh, Venusaur, Obviously has the ability Chlorophyll, it's holding a Focus Sash, and it has Sleep Powder, Sludge Bomb, Leaf Storm, and Earth Power. This is an offensive Venusaur, this is a YOLO Venusaur. YOLO Venusaur. <laughs> I mean, look at it, it's a totally a this, YOLO This Venusaur. team has two two very different modes, too, that we can talk yes. about. But yeah. Which is very good, like, a yeah. lot of VGCs look like, a VGC teams look like something yes. similar to this. Yeah. Mm-mm. So... If you can afford to have a dedicated Sunsetter on your current game, you bring Ninetales. It's got Drought, it's got Choice Packs, it's got Heat Wave, Solar Beam, Overheat, and Dark Pulse. It's kind of a YOLO Ninetales as well, but yeah. uh, I'm, I'm more struck by the YOLO nature of the Venusaur because that's not what Venusaur usually does. Uh, not typically. This gen, though, it's been kind of doing that. The other thing that I've seen Venusaur really carry this gen has been scope lens as opposed to um Mm-mm, as opposed to for the sleep sash. powder so you can get essentially 100 percent sleep powders it's amazing and then venusaur becomes your new amoongus this gen yeah which is really cool i i like oh, i like I that love a lot. it i like that a lot i mean it's a better amoongus <laughs> in, I that, adore in that regard venusaur it's just so, so good yeah you typically well, the only thing amoongus had on it was rage powder yeah mm. uh well rage powder better defenses it's a bit bulkier but yeah, but Amoongus is, is not going to do anything to you offensively. Yeah, exactly. Venusaur is going to destroy your life. Venusaur is scary. The only thing with the that Venusaur is you typically run Synthesis on it, so you have to ditch one of its coverage moves, like Sludge Bomb, Leaf Storm, mm. or Earth Power, so you have to like, pick and choose which one you're going to dump. Yeah, but this is a Yellow Venusaur. Yeah, it's a Yellow Venusaur, though. And if you mm-hmm. have a problem, that's what Sleep Powder is for, you know? So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so on this team, we also have another Kanto starter being Charizard. I'd like to point out this team has no Gen 8 Pokemon, with the, with the exception of, like, of regional form. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, Charizard. Um, this is definitely G-Max. It's Heat Wave, Hurricane, Blast Burn, and Protect. Mostly Hurricane, so you can get those max air streams going, so you can get speed if you don't have sun. It does have solar powers and abilities, so if the sun is out, it's going to hit a lot of things. Not to mention it can set its own sun as a... Well, no, it can't set sun uh, if it's G-Max. No, it cannot. Um, if it is G-Max, it'd be really cool. Uh, mm. if Dynamax Charizard would be really cool, just so you can set sun. But it's probably not the case. Um, but it's it's typical Charizard. And then the other one is typical Darmanitan. <laughs> mm-hmm. Choice Scarf, 
uh, Galarian Darmanitan with Gorilla Tactics, Icicle Crash, Flare Blitz, Superpower, Rock Slider, all of its moves. I mean, I guess you could go big with Galarian Darmanitan and also Set Sun with Flare Blitz. Uh, if you really, really, really wanted to, but I mean, it's it's an attacker. If They're out there to do really damage. This seems like this seems like come out and hit them hard. The the VGC yeah. team, <laughs> come out, hit them hard. Uh, but uh, it does have another mode, and I'll let Sublime do it because Sublime loves this. Sure, like a lot of VGC teams have multiple ways to win. Like that's very important. Um, because what if you're going up against a team that counters the sun pl- mode? That like that's your mm-hmm. first plan. That's why you're gonna come on with the trick room backup team. You know. So it's like, oh, I need to make sure I can counter like whatever speed stuff they're doing. You got the Dustclops and Rhyperior combo. Dustclops is rocking that Eviolite, of course. We got that Frisk, which is so good in VGC because information is everything. Mm. Um, so knowing what your item is being... Yeah, knowing items is good. The more you know. Exactly. Nightshade because you know what you're doing. You know what uh, the amount of damage you'll be doing. Pain Split. Um, bulldoze. That's interesting. It's probably to decrease it's speed to on cross your the weakness policy. Oh yeah, on the right carrier. carrier. That's what it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, because they pair together. And then trick room. This is your trick room setter. It's, yeah. It ain't going down in a turn. Then you got the Rhyperior with the weakness policy t- paired with the bulldoze from the Dustclops. I wouldn't be surprised if these are um, if the Dustclops is like just slower than the Rhyperior, so it acts first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that way you'll get your weakness policy off. You've got solid rock, so you don't even mind. Mm-hmm. Um, even less coming off Mm-mm. of the dust clubs, right? Uh, you're rocking high horsepower, not earthquakes, because we care about our teammates, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, rock slide, because it's so good. Oh, rock slide and VGC is so good. Um, thunder punch for the coverage and protect. Honestly, thunder punch is because melodic. That's the real answer. It's just yeah. because melodic. <laughs> because anything else you got rock slide for. Melodic's just like melodic's very prevalent right now, and so you need to like punch it in the face. Got to take it down a peg. You need to punch it in the face a lot before it like coils and puts you to sleep, and yep. it's a whole shebang. Yep, melodic. Melodic's a problem. This I is a good it. team. This is a fun looking team. So we'll put it on Mm-mm. the Discord if you want to try it out. You can try this team out in your PFT team match this week, or I guess it's over now. So never mind. Don't do that. Next year, there's always next, next year. Well, we're gonna we're planning something out. We're trying to figure out something because we're starting summer league so late. We're gonna try to do some kind of tournament in between, mm. and it might be like a one day thing where it's just like, hey, you come on and like you play for a day. It's gonna be more like akin to a battle clinic, I think. Mm. But because we're just like, let's use the end game tournament functionality. Yeah. So we'll we'll figure it out. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll definitely see what where we're going with that. So on that note, though, uh, yeah, I guess this is the team. We're going to kick things on over to the mailbag now, so we will catch you over there. Let's go open some mail. It's mail time! Send in your emails! And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the segment of the show where you can send in emails to pucklepodcast at gmail.com and probably have them read on the show. We read everything. That she send us, uh, not out loud, but we do read them. Uh, <laughs> so you can go ahead and send that into the show. Uh, this segment, as always, is brought to you by the very fictional energy drink, Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! And we typically have a prompt that nobody answered the last week, which was, what kind of format are you playing in VGC or in Pokemon in general? If nobody answered it. We did get a one wonderful email that we are going to read today on the show. Um, I really, I, It is a wonderful email from a wonderful friend. Yes. And we are also going to uh, ask you guys next week, what uh, what is your favorite type? Yeah, let's do that. What's your favorite type? We talked about types today. What's your favorite yeah. Pokemon type? And why? And like, why? Because as we, as we said, there are many different aspects to a type. Yes. Although, just real quick, what is our favorite type? Because we don't mail in and we're here. Uh, Ooh, uh, look at my favorite Pokemon and you will know my two favorite types. Okay, well, pick one. Pick one. No, no, I can't. You only get one. You get. You only get one. I only get one. So it's flying. Is it grass or is it? It's <laughs> fair. It's flying. You're right, Batch. It's flying. <laughs> it's flying. <laughs> what about you, Thatch? Uh, I I guess I have to say water. I don't know. You don't. Uh, I, you don't. I don't, you know, don't I like have a, to. I like electric type. It just feels good. It okay, feels. Okay, that's good. fine. Mine's dark. Yeah, that's that. That's on brand. We've been new. It's on We've brand. We that's, that's on brand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this next email, uh, well, this only email today is from uh, Bosophus. 
Who the we one love. and we only. Love the one and only Bosephus. We love him so show. much. Yeah, go ahead, Whimsy Cotton, read it. So, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll try to be as bow as possible while I read it, but <laughs> it is unreachable, so I will do my best. I don't know if that's What's attainable. Up, your c- <laughs> yes. What's up, your cool meows and littons? Both of us here with Big Mom Rescue. How's it been? I have missed you all dearly, as this last year has been the wildest yet for me. However, not a week goes by that I don't listen to the show. I'm getting news, learning about the current poke climate, screaming out obvious poke quiz answers at the co-host, or sometimes just listening because I miss all my friends. He knew oh. Charmander got wing attack. He did. Oh. I don't know. He probably did. It's 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 Bo. <laughs> it's Bo. We miss you too, darling. Just hit us up on Discord. Yeah, Facebook just hit us up. <laughs> you here. have us. You have us. <laughs> We're ready for you. Sadly, Pokemon has not been very present in my life lately. Pre-COVID, I was caught up pretty heavy in a pretty terrible job, and I finally dug myself out. Good for you, mate. Yeah, good for you, bud. With a combo of getting a new job, quarantine, and a small financial blessing, I was able to get Sword and Shield, and honestly, those games kinda broke me. I'm not a competitive player, keeping up with that rotating meta thing just isn't for me, and I admit that. But Sword and Shield is more than just that, but I'll spare you all all of my thoughts on that. But I want to know, (laughs) Bo. Yeah, we want to know, (laughs) Bo. Instead, in lieu of playing new games, I've been playing old. But fear not, Thatch, I have graduated from my Gen 1 in two days. I am now Boltoy deep in Gens 3 and 4. (laughs) I've completed Leaf Green, Emerald and Platinum. I've completed PBR with my Platinum team the whole time I played through the game, which, to be honest, was super fun. I finally finished filling my Pokemon Ranch on the Wii and finally got my legit Gen 4 Mew, which was the last Pokemon I needed to complete the decks in my Pearl save that I have had since launch date on the 22nd of April 2007. My starter was Piplup. Wow, Bo, that's amazing. I am loving playing on the older hardware and playing with all the quirks. And there's so much to do, so much to explore and be rediscovered. Sinnoh has a lot to offer. And if I can get one Jirachi wish, it will be for a true Auras level remake for Diamond and Pearl. And for the love of Arceus, Mew and all the unknown, please don't give us a let's go iteration. Just please, Game Freak. If he has to die, let my boy die with his head held high. Not like that. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to write in, say hello, and I love and miss you guys. Keep rocking, Puckle Onions, your best friend forever, Bo. Oh, you are our best friend forever. He is that our is best so friend Bo. forever. That I is love a Bowie you. <laughs> I love you. I'm going to cry just out of how much I love Bo. We love Bo you, is Bo. Great. We love you, buddy. Send us a mess- hit us up in the DMs yeah, sometime. Yeah, hit us up, bro. Yeah. Hit us up. Uh, yeah, no, that, we appreciate that email, Bo. And you know what? You know what? Because it's Bo, he gets the green Tauros badge this week. No one has ever <laughs> he gets deserved the Bo it green more. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting the green Tauros. Hit us up on Discord for the green Tauros badge, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> well, now tr- you have to talk to us. Now you have to talk to us. We gave you a reason. <laughs> As a true Puckle fan, you know you have to, re- re- you have to redeem that. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, thank you for the email. And as always, um, we, we appreciate emails from everybody uh, from the Puckle community. Send them in, PucklePodcast.com. We really like listening to you guys and reading your emails and your thoughts. And like we love having discussions because a lot of you do have interesting ideas that we don't have from our perspective. Some of you are newer Pokemon fans. I think everybody that's involved with the show, outside of a couple of people, found Pokemon like as at Pokemon's inception. So a lot of our views are very skewed towards that perception. And that angle and that perspective. And so I Back really like... my day. Well, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, yeah. Sublime and I t- uh, also have Pokemon brains. So that's also a problem. Um, so <laughs> that's the thing. Did you know that, Sublime? I did not. Yeah. Uh, so, I, what is this thing? Uh, so, so what happened... So people, they did a psychological study. Like, no joke. This is a thing. They did like, they did like CAT scans and everything of people who had, um, who had played Pokemon as children, like back in like 98, versus people who didn't at the same time and then like they did cat scans of their brains to like see how they developed and they found that there were like unique differences in the people that played pokemon Mm -hmm. in their brains are we smarter or uh i don't know if there was a conclusion other than there's a difference (laughs) 
Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Like, if was, I don't have yeah. it because I was too old when I played Pokemon. Yeah. yeah Whimsicott no, wasn't. I, yeah. 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 So Whimsicott was too Tash old. and I are very it. close in age. Yes. Uh, yeah. We're very, very close. So. 11 months to the day. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so, so you and I both have Pokemon brain. So it, it just changed our perception. I think that's honestly sublime. I think that's honestly why we had such a hard time with Dexit. I, we can talk about that's that. That's so informative. Though. Yes. Yeah. So, but yeah, we can talk about that another day. <laughs> <laughs> talk about that another day. So yeah, I really enjoyed, uh, I really enjoyed that email, but send us more emails. com. Let us know what your favorite type is and why. Um, I, I just feel good using ele- Ampharos is cool. So electric types are cool. So is Electivire. Electivire is also cool. Electivire is the best Gen 4 Pokemon. I think that's a true statement. Uh, opinions. Yeah, Choices. Yeah, I We mean, are allowed to have opinions. Yes, that we are. Yes, we thing. are. <laughs> uh, if you want to hang out with us more, you can come to our Discord server. The link is always in the, is in the show notes. I know on Spotify there were issues with that, so I'm going to try to fix that. It turns out like Spotify is like shoving all of our words together. Bad Spotify. Bad Spotify. Mm, and so we're going to fix that so you guys can come to the Discord server and hang out with us, get some shiny Pokemon, get some like fun, just good times, join our tournaments, have a really fun time. If you want to keep up with us on social media, Twitter is the best place to do that. We also do offer an Instagram and a Facebook that you can also go and you can follow us on as well. Find out about more Puckley good events. You can also get more content. Like We do more than just this podcast. Uh, we've, we're, we're moving in on some YouTube stuff. In the near future, I'm very excited for some of this other stuff because we're going to do like some mini podcast type things that I'm very excited for um, because it's just it's just like good content that's right up our alley. But you can also watch us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the puckle podcast where I stream at least once a week, if not twice a week. Um, I'm going to move so that there's like one stream every week where there's uh, where it's just like a giveaway and you just watch the you watch the bot giveaway of Pokemon <laughs> <laughs> and you can get it. I think that'd be really cool if you're into that. Um, so watch out for those. Follow us on Twitch if you want to be in on that. And you can also go ahead and uh, uh, you can also go ahead and support the show financially in a variety of different ways. One being just dropping a Twitch Prime subscription. If you do have Twitch or Amazon Prime, we really appreciate that. That does come back to us and it lets us do some cool stuff with the community um, and make the show better and just the community a bigger and better place. We, we've created something really cool. So I'm, I'm very happy with the support that we do have currently. Um, on top of that, go to T Public and get a cool T-shirt um, on our store at T Public. Uh, whatever the link is after that, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'll be completely honest. Uh, you can also go to Vite Ramen if you want some noodles. I think they just came out with a new flavor. I don't think the spicy noodles have come out yet, though. Unfortunately, that was going to be the next new flavor. Yeah, oh, that, that is, pork, right? Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. That's not out it's yet. It's the though. spice one. Yeah, yeah. It's not out yet, though. I don't think it ships until June. No, exactly. No, the, 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 I think I think Seth says it's out, but it's shipping currently. Okay. So it's not. So it's not in your. Like house you can yet. order it, but you can't have it. Okay. Yet. Yeah. If you want to get some of that, though, you can go to Vite Ramen and use code Puckle for ten percent off. We really appreciate the support in that way. Uh, you can also go ahead and um, you can also go ahead and the most direct way to support us is to go to our Patreon at patreoncom slash podcast, where you can get things like shiny Pokemon giveaways or. Uh, exclusive exclusive other content that we do over there as well. Uh, so definitely please go ahead and check that out. If you want to support the show, we really appreciate it, like I said, and it lets us do some really cool things here at Puckle. On that note, though, I think it's a great t- place to stop. So I have been Trainer Thatch. I continue to be sublime. And I guess I have been the fluffiest flying type. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Bye.